Hello again, this is John Ballantry. And this one, this particular video is going to be about how to read tarot cards as usual. So I want to make three points. Meanings, air and understanding are the three kind of subheadings for this particular presentation. So first of all, when you're beginning with cards, and even if you've been at them for a while, most people will encourage you to learn meanings or to figure out what a card means so they have their daily their daily card, their weekly card, their weekly spread, whatever it happens to be. And the idea is that you try and figure out what cards mean. And I'm saying that's not a particularly productive way of trying to learn how to read tarot. So this is partly because you can take any card. I can give you a thousand meanings for every 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 card that there is in the deck. But even with a thousand meanings, it sounds like a good idea, but you still have to then choose the right one, right? And that can be very difficult. So even like you, you've got a list, you have, a card comes up, you've got a list of meanings. Is this the meaning? Well, it could be. What about this? Well, that could be as well. So it's sort of like you get a few meanings, a few possible meanings, and you're sort of going round and round in circles. And you don't really know, you're kind of trapped and stuck. Um, trying to figure out what the right meaning is. So having a list can be like having being in a dead end. There's lots of space to move around, but you're not really getting any closer to a conclusion or to a correct answer. So that's part of it. The other thing is that um, a lot of meanings might actually be wrong. So for instance, you take the sort of cups. Cups upright represents, let's say, happiness. You know, it's good, it's enjoyment, pleasure, company of other people. So it's easy to look at that cup upside down and think it represents sorrow. Okay, because it's cups, but it's upside down. So it's the opposite of happiness, which is sorrow, or disappointment, or upset, or whatever it happens to be. So the cups upside down represent tears flowing out. It's one way of looking at it, because cups is liquid and, and water and so on. The thing is, if you've ever had... If you've ever, ever had a problem and you had a good cry about it, and I'm sure we've all done this at some time in our life, you feel an awful lot better because you had a good cry. So cups upside down can represent tears, but it doesn't always have to be something bad because tear, cups upside down can represent the release of stress or the release of tension. So cups upside down, instead of being bad, can be good, right? So this whole idea of, of figuring out a card's meaning, it's not always going to get you to a position where you can do a good reading. And the point is, I think we all want to do good readings through people. So I'm saying figuring out meanings isn't the way to go. The other thing is, um, people have the habit of, of teaching um, there are four elements, fire, air, earth and water, and there are four suits. So each of the suits goes with one of the elements. Okay, so let's say you've got a sword card comes up. Instead of looking at the sword card, they'll say, okay, this represents air. And air is ideas and communication and self-expression and so on. And so they get kind of, of away from the card itself into this other realm or into this other way of, of looking at things, which is kind of astrological. And it seems to be a good idea because it seems to be giving you more information, but I don't think it is because, let's say you get the King of Swords and you say, okay, this is a Gemini person. Thing is, most people, most people don't know what Gemini's actually like. People know the date or you know that your, you know, your brother or your child is a Gemini and that's about as far as it goes. So. Saying to people, this card represents Gemini, um, isn't that helpful because who is this individual? You know, because you can say, well, is it my brother-in-law? Because he's a Gemini. Okay, it could be. Is it my boss? I don't know what his birth date is. You know, so it could be that you, get your, you guess right and you get the right person. But it could be that you guess wrong and you end up pointing the questioner in the wrong direction. So... What's Germany like and who's Germany? Those can be, those seem to be answers, but um, in many ways it's not a good idea. So what I'd like to do is, or what I prefer to do is, let's deal with reality, okay? So, and deal with 
the symbolism of the cards in, in, in ways that everybody can understand. So if I start talking about air signs, most people are going to, you know, their eyes will close because they don't understand or they're not interested. But if I say this is a sword, let's say I've got a sword in my hand, everybody knows a sword is a weapon, right? You can attack or you can defend. So the sort of sword represents attacking or being on the defensive. So the king of swords, right, this Germany person that we don't know who it is. So if you say, if the king of swords comes up and it's upright, this is a person who knows how to attack and when to attack and how to defend and when to defend, right? You can trust him because he's going to use his power for good, let's say, instead of for evil, one way of expressing it. Whereas the king of, the king of swords upside down can be somebody who attacks when he ought to be defending, or who attacks the wrong person, or who defends when they ought to be going out making changes, right? So it can be somebody who flies off the handle, who suddenly loses his temper for no good reason. So you're saying to your question about, okay, this is the king of swords, and it's the kind of person who loses his temper. And the person said, oh, you know, that sounds like my boss, because with him, if you make a little mistake, he acts like you've started World War Three. So this King of Swords looks like the boss. So it's a way of, if, if we deal with reality and deal with cards and the images in themselves, we're going to get information that everybody can relate to and understand. Instead of apparently giving good information, this is a Gemini or this is an air sign, and really getting stuck and not knowing how to proceed beyond that point. Because I want to say that astrology is astrology, right? It's, it's also the sun. It's a sunny day today. I, we can't go outside and look at the sun directly because, you know, it'll blind you or you just don't want to do it. So when it comes to astrology, you can't deal with it head on. Whereas the tarot is the tarot and it's ruled by the moon. And you can go and look at the moon, the full moon, first, third quarter, whatever it happens to be. And you can look at the moon and it's comfortable. So don't mix astrology and the tarot. You're much better off and you're going to make much more progress if you stick with the tarot. So if I'm saying forget meanings and or forget trying to learn meanings and forget the elements, what's left, and the third word that I gave you at the beginning was understanding. And understanding is an interesting word because it's a bit like a tree. Okay, so there's, that's you standing, right? You're standing under and you've got the, all the branches and all the tree around you so you've got all the understanding and all the information is up here and you're below and you can reach up and you can draw and here you can draw from there and it's not like you need to know everything all at once at the same time because you can draw on what is above you and what is there and what's within you or within your own mind as well so um, let's say you've got a cup full of understanding like a little bit Somebody asks you a question, if you use understanding, you're going to point them in the right direction and give them, let's say, step one and two of a solution. If you can't deal with step three, four, five, six, that doesn't matter. At least you've pointed them in the right direction and they're going to be able to do good things with the information you give them. Maybe you've got a bowl of information, right? A bowl of understanding, rather. You, you're going to be able to give them points one, two, three, four, but maybe you get stuck with points five and six. Right, but let's say you've got a bathtub full of understanding, you know, so this, you're going to get, be able to give them the whole answer. So let's say you begin with, somebody wants to know I've got a problem, and the first card is the Queen of Pentacles, or any court card. So if you get a little bit of understanding, you're going to say to the person, okay, you ought to find somebody who knows what to do, or who's been through what you've been through, and talk to this individual, and you're going to get good information about what to do and how to handle the situation. And that maybe then the next card can be the two of cups reverse, right? So you look at the two of cups reverse and you don't know what to say about it, but it doesn't matter. And maybe the next card is the four of cups, right? So you've told them find somebody who knows what to do, and that's a, that's good enough. Um, if you've got a bowl full of understanding, you say find somebody who knows what to do, or who's been through what you've been through. Then go and talk to the person. Cups upside down, two people, you know, 
arguments, dis, um, uh, discord, or, or um, uh, can't think of the word. Okay, so you go to the person that's the problem, and you talk to them, and you tell them one thing. You don't tell them everything. Just tell them one thing you want them to do. And then the next card is the Four of Cups. Then you have to be patient, right? You can't tell them everything all at once because it's too much. They can't handle it. So tell them a little. And then act in a patient manner for a bit. And then if you get more, more understanding than that, you know the next card is the Six of Batons, card of victory. So what you do is after a certain amount of time has passed and the person's been able to digest what you told them, you go back and you give them more information because it's a card of victory, they're going to understand what you're saying, they're going to appreciate what you're saying, they're going to believe in you, cooperate with you, and so th this victory, the, the solution or the, the problem is solved. And let's say the next card is the Wheel of Fortune, okay? So you're going to get results you hadn't even dreamed of. But um, this is kind of using... Um, uh, cards as cards and just taking what's there so um, uh, if you take this approach of looking at cards to develop understanding you're going to be able to leave the beginner stage behind you don't need the manual you don't need the book with all the answers in it because your understanding you're able to draw on information from here and there and put it together and answer people's questions so I'm sure you can understand what I'm getting at here and you can go off and you can uh, sort of write your own book or um, develop your own understanding and, and answer questions better. If you want more information the course is available there's a, a buy now button or a PayPal connection at the website www.thetaro.ca if you want because there's a video for every card and it takes the approach that I've just shown you. And there's videos as well for the court cards and for how to get to know the suits. So I think it's quite good. And, and the people who have bought it um, uh, are quite enthusiastic as well and kind of like what, I've, what they've got from it. Because it means they can go on and develop their own understanding, which means they're more comfortable and better able to read cards for other people and for themselves. So that's it. If you go to www.thetarot.ca, I'm, I'm working to change it. And so one, one last point I'd like to make is I'm putting new material there. So if you want an advanced read of the new material, I'm going to send it to people who signed up for the newsletter. Um, so send it to them and then a couple of weeks later, um, once I get things together, I'll put it on the website. So if you want advanced notice, send me an email to blltr at yahoo.com and I'll put you on the list and send you updates regularly. We start the plan. So that was it. Thanks for watching. If you have comments or questions, send me an email and we'll take it from there. Thanks very much. And one, one last thing that I forgot to mention was that the Celtic Cross book is now available. It's finished and ready as a digital download. So I'll put the address on screen. Um, if you go to johnballantry.com um, slash ccbook slash index.html you'll find details and a sample that you can read and various other information about the book. Thanks very much.